Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Plasma and I like logic. So today I'm going to go over all 16 logical combinations of two inputs in Redstone. So this is something that's not talked about very much, but as somebody who has a degree in computer science, I feel like it's really important to understand in Redstone because it can enhance some of the things you can do. It'll make your life a little bit easier, some of the th tricks I'll show you too. It's not too scary to think about, but it's not well taught, and I figured I would take a crack at it. This is a video I've been wanting to do, and I haven't really seen any good ones on it, and those who do know this stuff only know some of the basics. And so I figure, since I don't really know where to put this video, I'm just gonna do it. So let's start at the beginning. Okay, so you're probably familiar with and and or. So, and and or, starting with something even more basic, you have on and off. So right here, I have behind me some torches that indicate on and off. And on the left side, I've got, we're gonna call that input A. And then on the top, we're gonna call that input B. And so what happens when you combine two inputs, A and B? They can be either on or off, which means that you've got four different combinations you can make with each of them. Well, I'm gonna go through all 16 combinations of those four outputs. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start right here. So the first two of the 16 possible combinations are on and off. And what that means is their inputs don't actually matter. So if you were to take those four circles and have or those four possible outputs and make them all on, then it doesn't matter what you have. And so if I were to, let's say I were to start building a contraption and I were to have two inputs like this, and no matter what happened, it was always on, is that really valid? Does that mean anything? It's probably broken if you end up in this situation, yes. But that is fundamentally what on and off mean. It's always off, always on. Maybe something's broken, but these are two of the 16 possible combinations. So now let's talk about the ones you know about. So and and or. These are very simple. Or means quite simply what it does in English, that you combine two things together. So if you were to do this, You'd be able to turn any lever, and it would turn on. As long as one of them is on, it'll be on. And it's a little bit trickier to do with redstone, but this, the idea is pretty simple, which is that they both need to be on for it to turn on. And so if I were to turn one of these levers on, you're not going to see any output. If I were to turn the other one on, you're not going to see any output. But if they're both on, then it'll work. And so that's a logical and, both things are required. So most people know about these two. They're pretty simple and this is what they would look like. Is A and B means that only when they're both on will it be on. And or means most of the time, unless they're both off, right? So the next two are the inversion of that. These are not the same thing, NAND and NOR. You can actually do this in redstone very simply by taking off the torch on an AND to make it an AND. And this really just means not AND. So you just take the output of an AND and you invert it. So you could also do it like this. You could say, this is your AND, you put it into a block, and there. So that's also an AND. So really all you're doing is saying, as, as long as they're not both on, then it can be on. And so it's very similar to an OR, but it's slightly different. Um, same with uh, NOR. NOR means that we are not happy unless they're both off. So if one of them is turned on, it goes off. And you can do it like this. Just invert the output of your OR. And so I could do that over here, like so. So now this is an OR. Make sense? So next two. So this is just A or just not A, and the same for B. And so essentially, these four combinations of 16 logics are when it breaks down to where the other output doesn't matter. So for these four right here, the output doesn't actually matter on one of the two. And so what you've got is a situation where ultimately only one of them matters. It doesn't matter what you do with B. The output is always going to be whatever A is. Now your machines can end up in a state like this if you've got a very complicated machine. You might have some weird output that puts you in this situation. But fundamentally this is what it would look like. It just means that you're ignoring and then not A means that you've got the same situation, but it's inverted. And the same thing for B and not B. So this is not B right here, and this is B over here. And so it's very 
simple to understand. Just like on and off, these are kind of when your logic breaks down. Generally, we think in terms of and and or. Now, there's another logical construct with and and or that's really important that too many people have a hard time understanding, and it's XOR. XOR is exclusive or. It's like or, but it means only one or the other. And so what you're essentially asking with an XOR is, are they different? And so they're harder to build with redstone, but I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do it that'll make it a little bit easier to understand. And so essentially, whenever I change one of the inputs, it will turn from off to on or from on to off. And so it's asking, are they different? If they're the same, whether it's here or here, they'll be off. But if they're different, it'll be on. And so the opposite, which we're not going to talk about, is XNOR, which is, are they the same? And all you have to do is input the output on that. But I really want you to understand XOR. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail. So one of the ways you can actually construct an XOR is by taking two things and ORing them together. So I've got an input right here and an input right here, and they're just connected together. So it's just redstone dust here. So this right here is basically OR. So what I could do is I could make an OR, and I could say, take that OR, and also, are they not ANDed together? So are they are they NAND? Are they not the same? And Or are they not both on? So if, as long as it's... So what we're kind of doing is we're taking this right here, which is OR, and we're saying, AND, make sure this one is off. And so what we're doing with the final output is an AND. So we're literally saying, and we want to make sure that this that they're not both the same. And so are they not so if one of them is on, we're happy. But if both of them are on, we're not happy. And that's what an and means. An and means if they're both on, we're not happy. We're happy unless they're both on. And so what we can do is we can take an or right here, and then we can take a NAND right here, which is, are they not both on? And that accounts for both sides of it. And when when we look at both of those together, using an AND, then we get this output where, regardless of which one we flick, it'll always turn on and turn off and turn on and turn off. And this is really nice. If you've ever had light switches in a home that are XORed together properly, it's really nice to have. If you've been in other houses where you have to have both light switches on for them to work, or you can only have or if you, but you have to have both light switches off for it to turn off, that can be a little bit annoying. And so that's because what happened is in your home, your light switches are either anded or ORed together instead of being XORed, which means that all you have to do is flip the switch and it'll turn from on to off no matter what. And if, uh, if the wiring was done correctly in a home, it would be XORed together like this. So I'm going to go ahead and build one more XOR just to make sure you understand it. And so right here, we've got an OR like this, where they're just ORed together. And right here, we've got an AND. I hope by now you understand NAND pretty well. Essentially, it's invert both of them and OR them together like this, and you can get, we're not happy if they're both on. See, now only one's on, both are on, we're not happy. This one can be on, we're fine. But if they're both on, we're not happy. And so what we can do is we can make this into an XOR by combining these to make an OR, and then just finding out what these two combined together are. And so we can do that by just running redstone dust like this, and we'll just and them together, like that. And there, now you got an XOR. We're just saying, let's combine these together. And so now, every time I flip one of these, you're going to get a different output. Just so you can see out of the corner of my eye. On, off, on, off, on, off. It allows a switch, every switch flick to change the state of it. XORs are super useful. So if you are, if you're have, still having trouble understanding, I highly encourage that you try to build one of these, just to try and understand it. But by combining these two together, an OR and an AND with an AND, you can get that output. There are other builds that are more compact, but they're a little bit harder to understand. That's a very important concept, and I don't think it's taught well enough. So there's one more concept to go over in this video, and that's the concept of implication. So implication is the idea that one output implies the other output. What that means is that we're going to be happy unless the first one is true and the second one is false. And so if this one is on and this one did not also be on, then we're not happy. 
So it looks like this. Essentially, it's always going to return true or on unless, so it's, it's a test for whether A may cause B. And so you could use this for, say for example, you've got a mob farm that you want to make sure it's working. You could have a signal coming out of it if the farm is producing output and maybe there's another requirement like a player has to be in a certain location and so you could have a redstone detecting whether the player is in that location and you can have redstone detecting whether it's working and if you used an implies gate together you'd be able to tell whether it's broken because if the player's there then it should be working so if it's not working and the player's there and so this is a combination um, the logical combination is not a or b and so we basically, the output you want to be the condition needs to be negative or inverted, and then we just or it with the other one. And this will tell us whether this should cause this but isn't. And so if something is wrong, it will go off. And so this is really, it's really useful for that. And there are three other combinations that are basically the same thing. You could do it the other direction with B and A, and it's really, that's just the mirror image of it just like on and off or um, just A or just B. This is just the mirror image of it, where you basically say, B sh is B causing A? It's the same thing. The inverse of this output, so maybe you want it to turn on if there's a problem, would be to just invert the output. And that gives us a doesn't imply or a material non-implication. And so those are the other two combinations. And with that, that makes 16. And so this is this would be one way of doing it. Basically, what I've done is I've taken off part of an AND gate to make it into an OR. But what we've got here is A and not B. And so this is A and not B because it's inverted. And so it's only going to be happy if A is on and B is not on. See, now it's happy. But any other circumstance any of these combinations, it's not going to be happy. This one, or either of these two. But we're not going to be happy unless, yeah, like I said, unless A and not B. And the in, the inverse, uh, the other, the, pointing the other direction. And so those are, the, those are the most complicated to understand, but really just understand that they're an inverse of this idea of implies. So really, of these four, you really want to care about this one. The idea, just like with XOR, you really want to care about XOR, but these concepts of XOR and implies are really useful for redstone and are not very often used. In particular, XOR allows you to, like I said, flip a switch and it will always change the output, even if you have multiple switches. So you could have a switch somewhere else in your house that opens or closes a door, and you could flip a switch somewhere else and open or close that door. You don't have to worry about where the door is open or closed. Very useful. And so that's it for this video. Hope that was helpful for you. That's all 16 combinations. I'll fly through them really quick so you can see. But um, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, we're going to be doing more videos like this. I'll link to my Redstone Masterclass series. Um, this I couldn't find a good place to fit in the series. But we've got on and off, and and or, nand and or, just A or just not A, just B or just not B, XOR and XNOR, and then implies A implies B, B implies A, A doesn't imply B, and B doesn't imply A. And so those are the 16 combinations of logic. Now you can say you know all possible combinations of output in what's called Boolean algebra. It's fairly easy to understand some of these concepts when you've worked with them a bit, but it can be a little confusing if you haven't. And so I think the one thing I would, the two things I would suggest would be to play with implies, and if you only played with one of them, play with XOR, because XOR is super useful for everyday things. Um, there's On the wiki you can find links to different ways of building an XOR, um, really what you just want to do is you want to look at, like I said, oring them together and then doing a not and together and then finding out what those two combined is. And that will tell you XOR. So have a good rest of your day. That's it. Bye.